severe solar storm alert. The NOAA has just filed a severe solar storm alert for today because Sunspot AR664 fired five major solar flares and uh, three of them are expected to combine, meaning that the two of them are moving faster than the other and these flares will combine into one big solar storm front. We don't know how big that's going to be when they all combine like that. There's a lot of factors involved, but five major solar flares out of this AR-664. And AR-664 is now as big, maybe bigger, as it's growing, still growing, as the sunspot system that sent out the Keratin event in 1859, which caused fires in telegraph stations, which if that occurs today, we lose our grid completely. My friends, that storm could do more damage. Fortunately, it's starting to turn away from us. Hopefully, it gets out of the way before it does anything crazy. But we have a major sunspot, an AR664 or a system of sunspots, and it is active. Five major flares and a G4 geomagnetic alert is upon us. They expect it to arrive somewhere around midday Friday, midday Friday. And they are expecting effects. Let's go into this. I'm going to do a share screen with this, my friends. You need to be ready. Get your gas tanks filled up. Uh, you know, and you might want to disconnect your house <laughs> if uh, this gets any worse. My friends, uh, wow, let's go into it. Let's go look at this stuff. Share screen. Ding, ding. Here we are, my friends. Uh, we'll start over here on the NOAA side. Look at this huge sunspot group right here. It is ginormous. And it says at least five Earth-directed coronal mass ejections, not just flares. These are the coronal mass ejections. Sometimes a flare don't kick one out. But this is the ionized charged particles that get sent out from the sun at hypervelocity. No, it's not speed of light. That's why they don't get here in eight minutes like the light from the sun. But it takes, uh, it takes uh, a little time. They're expected to arrive again midday tomorrow. And it could persist through Sundays all weekend, my friends. All weekend, we may be getting these storms. So we're going to look at what a G4 is in a moment. But uh, this is uh, the uh, this is comparable to the uh, October Halloween storms from 2003. And this is the biggest solar storm alert. We've not had a G4 alert since 2005. So 19 years since we've had a storm this big. My friends, not the last solar cycle, but this one is huge. Look at this. I'm going to just have a look at that. There it is, 3664. It's over here next to 3668. So this is a huge, ginormous uh, grouping. 3663 is not this small. This is still facing us all too directly. Hopefully, it will scan around. But, guys, it is still almost directly facing us. It could kick out a larger coronal mass ejection at any time. It could still grow because it's been growing. Uh, just to show you a com uh, comparison down here, here it is compared to the Keratin event sunspot group. I kid you not, guys. Here it is, and there's Keratin. Actually, it looks bigger. It actually looks bigger to me. It's very comparable. This is the Keratin event group. This is the Keratin event group. This is AR six six. Excuse me, AR three six six four. My friends, this is nothing to joke about. It's time to take it serious. You need to get your preps in order. Uh, it may be time just to go to the big box store and get things. Go to your hunting supply, your camping supply stores, and pick some things up. Uh, you may not have time to get the deals you might get normally if they order them. Uh, here is uh, a part of that sunspot uh, coronal mass ejection. There's one, and there's another one. They just were firing off one after another, one after another. So, guys, yeah, look here. Zero days and no sunspots for two years in a row. In 2022 was one sunspot. So, guys, we are definitely uh, reaching into the solar maximum, and I think we're not even to the maximum yet because, see, look here. This sunspot still isn't up at the equator yet. This solar cycle may be more than we want, my friends, more than we want. So uh, let's look at a G4. Let's, let's look at what a G4 is. A G4 storm is 
you may have in your power systems possible widespread voltage control problems in some protective systems will mistakenly trip out key assets from the grid. Spacecraft may experience a surface charging and tracking problems. Corrections may be needed for orientation problems. Other systems, induced pipeline currents may affect preventative measures like preventive maintenance or just working on HF radio propagation, sporadic satellite navigation degraded for hours, low frequency radio navigation uh, disrupted, and auroras may be seen as far south as Alabama <laughs> and Northern California. I have seen those back in maybe 2003, 2005, somewhere back there. I think even in 2005 when we had that other G4, I saw, uh, I saw the auroras right here from my front porch of my house. Trees were gone up too much. I couldn't see them there, but I can definitely go out. I'll be looking for this, guys. I, yeah, I would love to see some major auroras here, but hopefully it won't hit our grid. Right now, the aurora activity is a little bit on the smaller side, but uh, we're talking it's going to arrive midday Friday. Bear that in mind, midday Friday. Get your uh, stuff in gear. Get your things ready. So uh, this is not a joke at all, my friends. I'm, I'm putting it out here for you to see. Uh, the biggest threat, if a bigger flare erupts from this thing, it is still facing us. This is still facing us. Like I said, I hope it rotates away before it gets any worse, but it's been firing a lot. Bigger or as big? It looks bigger to me than the Carrington event sunspot group. It looks bigger. Now, let's hope that this depiction here isn't just laid out for size. I hope the Keratin event was closer to the equator because, guys, what are we looking for in this solar cycle? This is huge. This is big. All right, enough said. I'm sure that enough. I can't get Solar Ham to come up. That website must be down for some reason. It used to show all the details and time and all the various flares, the strength, and I just can't pull it up anymore. I don't know if it's over demand. The site got shut down. It started having some issues the last time I was looking at it. So maybe they just took it down. I don't know what the deal is with that one. Well, my friends, it's time to be aware, to prepare, to get ready. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Be prepared. But uh, yeah, get your groceries in order. Get batteries. You know, don't be the paper towel, toilet paper prepper. You know, you should have already had that stuff. Hopefully you've already got batteries, oodles of batteries and things like that. All that stuff's going to last so long. Faraday cages might be in order, but the, the sun puts out what's an E3 waveform. It's a longer waveform. It's not going to affect your personal electronics directly unless they're plugged in. You can protect them just simply by unplugging them because it's a long form wave. It's resonant with power lines, with pipelines, with railroad lines, long conductors is what picks this long waveform up. So you don't need a Faraday cage for this. That's the good news. The bad news is it can come in on your power lines from your house. It can come in on your phone lines. It can come in on your cable. If you've got metal pipes coming in your house from somewhere else, it can come in on those. So that's how you can get this thing. It could cause fires in houses. It caused fires in telegraph stations in 1859 with the Carrington event. I don't think this storm, I do not expect the G4 storm to do that. Okay? I do not expect the G4 storm to do that kind of damage. It, it may be more of a nuisance, an inconvenience. However, this sunspot is quite capable of putting out a care into them. That doesn't say it will, but it is active. It is large enough. It is capable of putting out a Carrington event. We could see a Carrington event now. We saw one in 1859. The next one occurred uh, just uh, uh, 59 years later. What was it? 60, yeah, uh, 60, uh, two years, 63 years later, what it was, not being. Uh, 21, 1921, so not so 62 years later, 1921, 1859 to 1921. And then it's been 1921 since we had anything like it. And the one 1921 was not as big as a Carrington event, by the way. That was called the railroad event. So it's been a while since we've seen a storm like that. It could happen. It could happen. Well, it can happen four or five in one cycle. It's always possible. It's random. It's always random probabilities, guys. 
So you can't say we're due or overdue. That don't make any sense. It's just when the sun is ready to do it. And right now we got a sunspot that could do it. And it is facing us. It could flare up. We, you know, it might have just flared up and we just hadn't got NOAA and all this stuff just hadn't updated yet to tell us. It's always possible. This could happen at any moment. It may not happen. I'm not saying it will, that we will get a Carrington event, but it is possible. Our magnetic field on our Earth is smaller than it was in 1859. We got less shield, less protection. Therefore, a little bit weaker storm can do as much or more damage. And furthermore, a you know, uh, Carrington event with our weaker shield <laughs> would be devastating. So don't discount it. Get ready. Get prepared. You should always be prepared. I shouldn't have to tell you these things, but I think a lot of people just like watching videos. They don't take it to heart. They think, well, that's not here yet. Nothing ever happens. Nothing's ever going to happen. Well, you can go back through history and find these events do happen, and our grid is not prepared for it. I know. I've chaired two power grid defense conferences. That's my podium plaque, my friends. I'm a member of two separate national level power grid defense committees. We're not there yet. Get yourself ready. Prepare yourself. Do the best you can. That's all I got to say, my friends. Thank y'all for watching. Be prepared and break out.